The Ninja 400 is a completely new motorcycle designed to take over the middleweight segment. They have changed everything from the Ninja 300. The engine is now a 399cc parallel twin from the previous 296cc and it's making 49 PS in the India spec version. The chassis is also new and lightweight steel trellis frame helps the motorcycle make 6 kg lighter than the previous version despite the bigger engine. The 173 kg curb weight includes a 14 liter fuel tank and overall mileage is 21 km per liter though hard riding we have seen it drop to about 18 km per liter. The all new styling makes it look like a much bigger bike compared to the Ninja 300 side by side but the new bike actually has a 35.6 mm shorter wheelbase which makes it much more agile. They have made the swing arm longer for better stability on straights and testing it up to 186 km per hour I observed that the motorcycle was really stable and at ease. The Ninja 400 gets lightweight 5 spoke alloy wheels and the size of the disc has been increased to a 300 10 millimeters. However, the front brake is still a twin caliper. Despite the bigger road presence, the 785 millimeters of low seat height makes it really easy for shorter riders. The rear grab rails may be India specific and they look ugly but could be useful for mounting on some luggage. The pillion seat is minimum and it's mostly for show and not for some actual use. The Ninja 400 gets wider tires now and that does inspire confidence while cornering. Honestly, I'm happy to see the bias ply IRC tires to be replaced by the Dunlop Sportmax radial rubber. In a way, Kawasaki listened to the feedback on the previous bike and fixed it, but how does it feel to ride? Let's find out. Let's talk a bit about the ergonomics. The foot pegs, pretty rare set. So, not much different uh, than the KTM Duke or RC series of motorcycles. The sitting position, upper body, reasonably upright. So, that's gonna keep the pressure of wrists and shoulders so they have kind of achieved a good ergonomics at least as far as i'm concerned because i personally find this to be a pretty reasonable setup for even for as a sport tourer or even when i'm going onto the track you know if you can lean back on the seat if you want if, if you want you can you know, if you want, you can lean back on the seat and then you can make it a lot more aggressive Like if you, if you really care about that sort of handling. Ergonomics is really good for a sport bike and it's more like a sport tourer. Kind of reminds me of the R3. But the question you ask is, does it corner? speed similar to what I got on the BMW this bike can do further further I mean I'm just playing with this bike first few high-speed corners the clutch you know it's it's a great clutch but I feel it needs to be slightly adjusted Dunlop tires they are the same size as the KTM Duke 390 110-70 R17 so on the front and 150-60 R17 on the rear which means uh, the new Apollo tires that I'm testing would probably be a good match for these bikes this bike as well if you want to switch out and try out on your Ninja 400 however the stock tires are performing quite well and after damping out a little bit air pressure the front end feel has improved so much that I feel it's doing uh, you know remarkably well much better lean angles and a 
powering out to the corner yeah this bike you know <laughs> if you have the money i mean i don't know probably i've not ridden the ninja 650 like this so can't really say what that will feel like but this bike enough for me so i was pretty impressed with the cornering results the front end feel is really really good and the front suspension could be a bit more stiffened to work better at a track day scenario but then that would affect the ride quality so i really think that kawasaki has done a reasonably good job with the suspension setup i like it i like it a lot it's a good motorcycle this is the ninja 400 let's cut out the pretensions subscribers didn't really request a review of this maybe one or two did but there was a lot of attention building up to this bike finally kawasaki's answer to the ktm's power and all of that and when it came out you know it, it did what it was supposed to do but the pricing at least for the indian market really killed it double the price of uh, the duke maybe more than that uh, double the price of the rc kawasaki i was expecting a lot aggressive pricing they really failed on this account it's got an acropo which slip on i asked him why did you buy this instead of the ninja 650 and he said exclusivity and also he believes it's the uh, class leading we will find that out we'll drag it out with the duke 390 on paper at least it's a uh, 49 ps of power and that's like the dukes around 44 ps or uh, 43.5 bhp might be a little bit more in ps terms uh, but still a little bit more power it's 173 kilograms because this is a parallel to an engine the kawasaki used to have parameter frames and that used to make their motorcycles heavier even with a bigger engine this bike is just 173 kilograms which means uh, they have progressed so if you guys are watching this from abroad you can tell me what is the pricing uh, in your country what is the pricing there and you know tracking through the corners tracks pretty well but the front end i'm feeling a little bit more wobble maybe it's got a bit more travel 125 millimeters of front suspension travel on a 41 millimeters upside down for a few mods on this bike i mean first is obviously the slip on he has installed some sort of a handle grip i'm not a big fan of that he was saying that is this is not as smooth as the kawasaki bikes and he was talking about some handlebar vibrations so he wears gloves but he had to mute out the vibrations and that is why you put them and they're kind of taking away more and feedback and feel from the front there is vibration which is something that i've never felt from a kawasaki engine specifically the ninja 300 it was especially in the lower rpms it was so so nicely damped and balanced out that you sometimes you know we used to feel as if the engine has shut down below us it was that quiet and that vibration free no longer with this bike it's making about 49 ps and it's making at a higher 10,000 rpm but not as high as traditional kawasaki so they're they've uh, changed that power made it more usable and the mid-range believe it or not the ninja 300 i've never liked that bike i know it's a lot of hard throb because it looked really nice it sound really nice but i always felt that the mid-range and the low end performance was hollow and that's where we spend most of our time in the day-to-day -day city use in even in the highway use below 120 kilometers per hour that bike's riding experience i wasn't really a, that much of a fond of but this bike completely different mid-range i'm testing out in the city very enjoyable power to play with and when you open up the rotor yeah this definitely puts the motorcycle up to the task the power delivery throttle response improved greatly over the previous ninja and with that acropo with slip on i mean dude did you hear that beast growl it up sounds so good and so aggressive i i yesterday did an exhaust sound i wasn't really much impressed while it was revving idly standing somewhere but while riding the bike this is a soundtrack this is a music system I think 
think if Kawasaki really wanted to because see the, the ZX-10R, their flagship liter bike the flagship liter bike, by the way that's the owner Rajesh Shri it's time to test out the brakes that's a 310 mm single petal disc up front with the Nissan two piston caliper these are semi floating discs and they feel quite good about 187 kilometers per hour could have gone further but didn't want to you know risk it too far clutch is very light it's um, bound to be a slipper clutch even that was on the ninja 300 but the clutch is getting activated quite with the slightest of press and that's why sometimes i'm you know cutting off the power accidentally it definitely looks like it's got a lot more road presence uh, but uh, sometimes you know the 300 still in my book it looks better because that was very well crafted and a, and a very compact motorcycle yet it had that uh, road presence and this one you know it tries to look like a bigger bike it it, it kind of is a, is a is a mixture of the ninja 300 and, and the all new uh, ninja 650 which is what it is because this is right in the middle of those two motorcycles but i personally you know since this is so expensive i probably would have wanted this to make a little bit more power but it's still making close to for 50 ps which is which is decent you know we've stopped let's take a look at the console i really like this anna dg kind of uh, speedometer it kind of reminds me of uh, the ninja h2 very futuristic looking you've got a lot of information we've got the range with the speedometer obviously that with the gear shift indicator we've got a clock and then we've got the analog rpm couple of trip meters you know it, it, I feel the rear suspension is a bit harder compared to the front but I guess the rear is adjustable the front is not unfortunately as far as I know let's check out the agility very agile bike very nice very balanced chassis i like trellis frames a lot they make the bike feel lighter than it is and they give me this kind of you know very rigid chassis feel so we're entering the traditional moto cafe this is a bouncy road so i can actually test out what it feels on the bad roads and yeah the front is good the rear is kind of hard for bad road conditions and here we have arrived the ninja 400 is a complete package and finally kawasaki almost got the equation right but with the pricing they don't really expect to sell that many units in india for the motorcycle i felt the front brake had a really spongy feedback and it wasn't inspiring much confidence but honestly it was slowing down the bike i feel a four piston caliper brake up front would have been ideal for such a big bike but otherwise there's very little to complain about this motorcycle the low and mid-range hollowness which was there on the ninja 300 has been fixed so now the bike is very much usable in the city highway conditions and the top end was always the trademark kawasaki howl and that has not been replaced my personal suggestion to kawasaki india would be to price it more aggressively and maybe they could do that by a little bit of price cuts and parts localization and the price difference between this and the ninja 650 should be at least 1.5 lakhs otherwise with the current pricing scenario i think the ninja 650 makes a much more bike for just about 70 or 80 thousand rupees more so i would rather go for that that's it i really enjoyed this motorcycle and if you want to support me through patreon you can pay one dollar per month or more and i'm also gonna bring up some special content for you guys that do decide to support me on patreon thanks for watching and i'll see you very soon this is Rahul. goodbye
the Sony on the show, show weeks handling that and met Sotam. My subscriber is riding that FZ Black FZ, so he just uh, spotted me. You know, keeps happening. I always feel good to meet people.